what's up everybody i hope all of you are doing extremely well my name is akshat gupta and i'm a senior software engineer at rccm welcome to boss coder academy's youtube channel so today we will be solving the lead code problem number 88 merge sorted array let's try to see how it looks like so the problem says that you are given with two integer arrays nums1 and nums2 sorted in non decreasing order or we call that as ascending order two integers m comma n representing the number of elements in the array nums1 and nums2 respectively the job is to merge nums1 and nums2 into a single sorted array okay so it says the final sorted array should not be returned by the function but instead it can be stored in the same array inside which is the nums1 to accommodate this nums1 has extra length of m plus n where the first m elements should be uh, denoted by the first elements which are present in the array nums1 and the remaining uh, n elements are the extra space which are present in nums2 so after merging them naturally we will know that all the total number of elements will be m plus n so we have exactly n number of extra spaces in nums2 so if you look at the example given below it says that input nums1 equal to 1 2 3 0 0 0 0 and the size of this array is 3 which means the non zero entities in the first nums1 array are three elements similarly nums2 is equal to 2 5 6 and the size of that is equal to 3 so if we merge them together the final output is supposed to be a non decreasing array in a sorted fashion so we all know that 1 2 3 2 5 6 when clapped together will look something like 1 2 2 3 5 and 6 so if you notice the exact number of elements are occupying the number of zeros which are in the first array hence the discussion which we have just seen in the question let's look at look at another example so here nums1 equal to 1 m equal to 1 and nums2 is an empty array since it is an empty array we do not have any preceding zeros in nums1 so that means the final output is just going to be the entire the, the exact content which is in nums1 already if we look at example number 3 we have nums1 equal to 0 that is 1 0 and therefore m is equal to 0 because we do not have any non zero entity inside nums1 we have only zeros uh, we have only zeros inside it right coming to nums2 we have nums2 equal to 1 for which n equal to 1 so naturally if you're clubbing them together the final answer will be what it is supposed to be just one element inside it right so let's try to understand how can we approach this particular problem so from the given input example let's take an example of 1 2 3 0 0 0 which is your nums1 and 2 5 and 6 which is the nums2 So here, the value of m is equal to three, and the value of n is equal to three, and we know for a fact that we have exactly three number of extra zeros in nums one, which are occupying or which will be occupied by the number of uh, elements inside nums two. How should we approach this? Right, the basic thought process which comes into the mind is why don't we simply copy all these numbers into one array? So one, two, three, two, five, six. We simply copied all the numbers from nums two into nums one. now we can simply call the sorting function on this input array sequence right naturally if we call the sorting function we know for a fact that the final answer will be getting is going to be 1 2 2 3 5 and 6 which is the exact output we are looking for absolutely right this approach will work just fine so if we try to analyze the time complexity of this particular approach right since we have m plus n elements at the end of merging state and we are calling the log sorry we are calling the sorting function on the m plus n elements so time complexity will for that will be m plus n log m plus n right and the space complexity will be order of m plus n right so clearly this approach seems to be like a viable idea but we know for a fact that the constraints said that uh, you know the, the number of elements could be a uh, uh, line between the, the range of 10 raised to 9 or 10 raised to 9 and the size of m into n can lie anywhere between 0 to 200 so naturally we can say the solution will pass right the solution will pass but is this the most optimized solution or not is the question can we come up with an algorithm then run that runs in linear time let's try to analyze that the example which was given to us said that the numbers were 1 2 3 Zero 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 and two five and six. The job was to merge them together. How should we approach this? Let's try to pick the element from the 
back side of both the arrays right from back side of both the arrays and let's keep a pointer p at the last index of the nums 1 so now if i compare p1 with p2 i can clearly see that p2 is bigger than p1 so naturally i can copy number 6 on the last location which is p and decrement the value of p2 and decrement the value of p1 Intermediate array will look something like this 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, and 6, and 2, 5, and 6, with the pointers P2, P1, and P as shown in the diagram. Now, again, compare P2 with P1. Clearly, we can see that P2 is bigger. So, let, let us put P2 into the location of P to make the intermediate array as 1, 2, 3, 0, 5, and 6, and the pointers P2, P, and P1 as shown respectively. Again, compare P2 with P1. So we clearly see this time, this time P1 is bigger than P2, right? So that means take the number on P1 and put that number into its right location. So now the number that we get will be 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 6 with the indexes as P1, P and P2 as shown in the diagram, right? So decrement the value of P1, obviously, because we have put 3 into its correct location. Now again, compare P2 with P1. On the comparison, we can see that number 2 and number 2 are just the same, right? They're exactly the same numbers. So that means we can put either of them into its correct location. So let's say we'll put P2 onto the place of P. The intermediate array will look like 1, 2, 2, 3, 5, and 6. And now P2 will become minus one p2 has gone out of the array which means we have exhausted all the possible numbers from nums2 and we have put them into the correct location which is out there so do we need to sort the remaining array absolutely not right because we already know that the input sequence was in a sorted order already and since we have put all the numbers since we have exhausted all the numbers from nums2 into nums1 that means i do not want to sort the array once again so I can simply say by the end of this, if P2 becomes negative, then that means we have got the final input array as the answer. So we can simply return the answer based on this index. So let us try to understand the coding aspect of it now. Uh, so as per the logic, let's declare the variables as shown. So I equal to M minus one, J equal to N minus one, and let's say we have a pointer k, which is m plus n minus 1. So this is this uh, kth index is actually pointing on the nums 1, but on the last location, ith pointer is present to the first non-zero entity from the behind on nums 1, and j is pointing to the, uh, to the last entity of nums 2. So what do we need to do? We need to start iterating on the values of i and j and check which one is, which one is actually bigger. And based on that, we'll be placing that entity into its correct location. So we can say that while i is greater than or equal to 0 and j is greater than or equal to 0. So perform some operation inside it. If nums1 of i is lesser than nums2 of j, that means the number in nums2 is bigger. So what do we are supposed to do? We're simply supposed to take the number from nums2 and put it into its correct location, which is on the index k. That means nums1 of k minus minus should be equal to nums2 of j minus minus, correct? Else, if the number is bigger in nums1, then that means take the number from nums1, so nums1 of k minus minus should be equal to nums1 on i minus minus this time, right? Naturally, if we have exhausted all the possible elements from nums2, then we are done. We don't, we're not supposed to perform anything. but if we exhaust all the possible numbers from nums1, that means we have some numbers remaining in nums2. So what are we supposed to do? We're simply supposed to copy all those elements from nums2 and put them into the correct location based on the index k. So let's do that. We can say that while j is greater than or equal to 0, simply put all the elements from nums2 into its correct location. So nums2 of j minus minus. And that's it. So let's run this code. It works just fine. Let's, let's go ahead and submit this code. Aha, it gets submitted, right? 
So this is how we can sort two different arrays into one. We can club two different sorted arrays into one in linear time complexity, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. So stay connected, like the video, share it with your friends if you found it useful, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.